Hello my friends and welcome back to another Brood War ladder battle. We've got Rain here in the bottom left hand corner. Jadon down in the bottom right. And if you're interested in games like this and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see Brood War live forever, make sure to pound that like button. We're going into this game from July uh, 1st of 2024. Happy Canada Day everybody. These guys met on the ladder and played a good little series here, which I've heard on uh, good information that this is a great series between these two. It's going to be close, so looking forward to how these games play out here. We've already got a scout coming out from Rain, but headed in the wrong direction. He's not going to find uh, Jadong right away. Jadong is going to get his overlord over the natural, so... I have some good information here right off the bat and with the overpool that's coming out of Jadong you should be able to uh, forego a scouting drone here and just go directly for the hatchery with full information of what's going on from Rain and this is always a, a great thing for the Zerg player not being or not being forced to send out a drone scout and just knowing exactly what the opener here is, is it's going to allow Jadong to do a lot of optimization. Now, he might not be able to get his hatchery uh, on time here because I think Rain will block this. Um, actually, Rain going to go right into the main here. Okay, he needs to know if there's a spawning pool finished. If this was a nine pool or not, there could be lings on the way. So he has to make sure that he's ready. He drops the Nexus. Seeing that the links have started here. How many are we actually going to go for? Just one set. One pair. So, um, as long as he starts this before the links pop. There it is. The links pop. Cannon is started. He should be fine here. Just going to have this uh, probe scouting around inside the main. Links are going to chase that. And everything is looking pretty nice and normal here. One drone heading out over towards the space. You know... I think it was Jadong, right? Who did this exact same... Um, yeah, he's, he, he, he took this exact same base on Apocalypse. So, now one of the reasons I'm really excited about this match right now is because recently Jadong has been playing very, very well in the KCM. So, we saw some great games out of him, especially in this matchup. I'm looking forward to more greatness. Um, here against Rain, and Rain is somebody who you never really know where he's at until it comes time for ASL when he's obviously uh, going to be well practiced and at the top of his game. But generally, he's he's not walking around uh, at a fighting, uh, you know, at his peak performance. He's pretty lax during the off season, doing a lot more live streaming and kind of variety streaming. Which is where he makes his money and then right as ASL is coming up, that's when he starts to practice. He usually uh, gets in shape right before the actual tournament begins, before the qualifiers start. And then tries to, you know, do a run in ASL and he is surprisingly good despite being, you know, part time uh, in Brood War. So it's always interesting to see where he's at during the middle of the season and since Jadong is such or at such a high level right now based on his previous results we'll, we'll be interested to see what happens here what this man can pull out and having him taking the third base right here is very exciting for me as well I think that uh, I didn't quite understand what the purpose of this base was for a little while uh, in that KCM cast. I was a little bit confused about it, but it seems like he wants to take that so he can get the fourth right here pretty free uh, and just focus on controlling this high ground right here. Also, this base is insanely good if you put a couple of hatcheries here. We saw that before that it's almost impossible or right here and right here. It's almost impossible to get in there with Zealots, whereas this base is quite a bit more open. A little bit more difficult to defend with just pure 
uh, hydras or one sunken, that type of thing. Yeah, you can see how congested this area is already with just one hatchery getting thrown down. Uh, and it kind of allows Jadon to build less. It allows him to build less hydras and sunken colonies to hold off the zealot attacks. So I'm really starting to fall for it. I really like this play from Jadon now. Rain has built an extra cannon. He hasn't been able to get much scouting information going here since the Lynx took out that probe on the map. Um, but he's going to get in here now and he's going to see and cancel his third cannon. That was a safety cannon. He starts it just in case there was Hydras popping out uh, on the other side of the map. He would have allowed that to finish, but it's not the case. Overlords are being hidden and Scourge are about to pop out here. What's the follow up? I don't expect anything strange. No, just Citadel and of course that Stargate with two Corsairs out here on the map. They're going to have to head home, but only one kill on the Overlords so far. Pretty darn good hiding of these Overlords for Jadong. Putting them in places they're just not going to be easily spotted. And now that the Scourge are here, you won't lose any more than one Overlord. Everything looking good here on both sides. I don't see... Uh, any significant damage happening this far or any significant advantage for either player looking for a corsair but not able to find it here very low zealot count as well so once we have the big explosion of gateways there's going to be opportunities here for rain to push out but for now for the moment jadong is free to just continuously drone up here and get into his next levels of tech. He's actually gone for mutas, which makes me feel like he's probably not going to go into uh, Lurker really quickly here. He does have three gas already, however. three Pretty pretty early three gas here. Maybe he wants to Ogre Zerg this? I'm not sure. I really like the setup here. You can see how tight this is in this area. Very difficult to get zeal uh, zealots in there and deal any sort of damage. And right now he's going to be losing some zealots out here on the map to the small group of mutas. This five mutalist uh, flock here. Gonna be able to chase these away. And even allow more time right now for uh, additional drones to start to come out here. He's going to be able to get into a good saturation on all three bases. And with six, six hatch hydra pump out an insane amount of units. First DT is out here, but plenty of defenses at either location. Can get run by here, so it's good to see the Lings uh, over by this choke. Not in the choke, but right beside the choke in case a DT tries to run by, because one sunken colony will not stop a DT from running by. Again, how do you get in here? This third base is so tight. Small group of Hydras here. This is the this this tiny little gap, and then this tiny little gap here. This is the only place that a Zealot or a DT could try to run through. But it's going to be really hard for them to get through either of those spots. Um, if the Zerg is competent, if they're paying attention. And definitely, Jadong is looking competent here. Finally, some uh, aggression out of Rain. He's going to look to fly into the main, get some kills on these uh, Overlords. But he actually takes a couple of hits from the Scourge here. Oh, Jadong flying in at the same time. Just goes after the Templar. I like the trade here. He's only got three Mutalists left. He traded off two, and he bought some time against the Corsairs. But, yeah, really smart play by him to just send the Scourge after the Corsairs and then uh, send the Mutas in to get their damage. P kick, pick off a couple of Templar here because they weren't really going to do much against the uh, Corsairs at this point. Nice job bringing out Scourge here to... Follow this attack up and only five Corsairs left. We will have to retreat. He did invest in that plus one. So these Corsairs really haven't done much. They killed like two overlords the entire game. And the temp or the uh the Mutas still got damage. The Mutas still managed to kill those important units to kill the Templar to limit the number of storms. Oh, this DT I think is gonna get picked. Not quite. Does manage to escape here. Hydralis are out in full force. No Lurker upgrade, I don't think, just yet. Fourth base is going to start to come down here. 
Rain is just stuck behind his wall right now, and there's not much he can do to poke out just yet, but the gateway explosion has happened. We're up to eight gates, and so very soon, we're going to see masses of Dragoons and Templar popping out here to try and push back Jadong. Maybe go for a third base here. He's starting to push over towards that. DT is going to try to slip up here into the top center, but... I don't think it's going to be able to make progress there. Small contingent of Hydras sitting out in front of this natural. Not able to dive on any Templar though as they come forward. Dark Templar with zero kills. Chilling at the back here. It looks like we might see uh, Rain take dominance over this high ground plateau. Which I was not expecting here. Where are all our Hydras? There they are. Got some Hydras over there. Um, these ones are going to be escaping up towards the third base. But uh, you don't really want to fight up ramp against this. Oh, coming in from the flank. He's going to get a couple of Templar right here. This is some great kills for Jadong. He does eat a big storm there on the exit. But he's trying his best to take skirmishing fights here to pick off those storms before uh, the full engagement here with the Mass Hydra. F some lurkers finally starting to pop out. It looks like... Jadong has just been buying time to get drone saturation going. Look at that drone saturation right now. Absolutely crazy. Nuts. F 54 drones at this point. He should be going into hive here soon. There it is. Queen's Nest on the way. Once that drone saturation is complete and we can start to pump out masses of upon masses of units, get that fourth gas online and start the transition here. I just being surrounded. Looks like these will all end up going down. Big army here on the high ground, but noticeably lacking in storms. Only two more High Templar popping out right now. And the third base will get saturated. This is exactly how Jadon likes to play this, though. All I'm feeling right now is Jadon is in a great spot. He's getting triple upgrades. He's going into Hive here as quickly as he can. He's making tons of lings. He doesn't have a lot of lurkers on this high ground, so maybe he could get broken here. But pretty quickly, he is going to uh, put together a very strong army. Make it incredibly hard for Rain to make any progress on that front. Now, Rain, there are options for him. He could be going for drops. Try to get inside that main base. From this angle, it's pretty easy to, to come in here and drop, but look at that. Jadong already on top of this uh, possibility here. He's got overlords. You would like to see them a little closer to the drones because we could actually see DTs start to kill everything without the Hydras even reacting. Um, let's see if that's going to come to pass here because I don't see any shuttles in production just yet. Here comes the Army of Rain. Not a lot of interaction this game, honestly. Just minor, small interactions here and there, which have given, uh, I would say, a pretty decent lead overall to Jadong. And now there's not that many Templars. going to try and push up against all these Lurkers. Dude, the Zealots were getting way too bunched up there. Sending forward the Lings immediately once the Lurkers become engaged. Damn, a lot of Zealots just dying there. That was like 20 Zealots just vaporized. And how much progress did we make? Almost none here up onto this high ground. And some Corsairs come in. It looks like they took out one Overlord in the main base, but can't get much more than that. A fourth base here on the way for Rain, but I don't imagine Jadong will let that happen. I, I just can't imagine him uh, not making a move against that base, like sending something down here and trying, then coming forward and trying to take this high ground. As long as you don't let probes transfer here, the base is not really worth much. If you can get a bunch of lurkers onto this high ground here, cut off probe transfer. Yeah, it looks like he's not going to be able to do it. Sitting back here, just waiting for hive upgrades. It's it's a reasonable choice, I think. If you're going to be getting into a very quick hive, like right now we're just 14 minutes in, almost 15 minutes in, and a defiler will be out very soon with consume. It's totally a reasonable way to play. Try to get a base in the top left. Potentially. Doesn't look like he's sending too much commitment over there to, to make that happen, but... We'll at least clear out these zealots over here anyway. Some little ling run buys. 
Oh, very well uh, defended base over here. Not going to be easy to break into that location. <laughs> Long distance probes, actually. Going to be headed back to mining down there in the bottom right. And four base versus four base. It sounds bad right now for Zerg, but as long as you have that hive upgrade coming, as long as you have those defilers on the way, it's not going to be too horrible here. Oh, man. I don't think he brought enough storm with this fight. Jadong pushed, a, or excuse me, Rain pushed a little bit too far forward uh, without the storms. He does retreat back to storm, but he lost a lot of the dragoons. Not that they're going to be worth much uh, in the coming fights here. He does need to maybe try to get over here, get up into this top center base. However, that could be a bait. We might see Jadong just full on counterattack if the full army of Rain goes up here to, to try and kill this. Instead, Rain going to take another base and continue to hold the middle here. Let's see. We don't have Plague just yet. We could see a Dark Swarm here, but I think it's better to just wait for Plague. Let the uh, Protoss player feed into you. Dark Swarm there. Another Dark Swarm going to come up here, I think, as the Lings come forward. Lurkers are going to come forward as well. And Rain is just going to get pushed a little bit further back here. Very nice Dark Swarms, but really we're waiting for the Plague to come through. Not much longer now. Let's take a look at the upgrades. 2-2 two, two here. 2-1 two, here. And 2-2 two, two on the Protoss as well. So, Lings are not quite up to snuff just yet, but having that 2 armor, it makes a huge difference. Right? We're only 2 attack. So, matching the Zealots. Oh, Lurkers managing to make their way down here. Creating a serious problem right now for Rain to have to deal with. Dark Swarm's going down on these cannons. If he can just get on top of the cannons with no storm, then he will annihilate this base. Trying to come down this ramp right now. Forcing a very bad fight is Jadong. Forcing Rain into a really difficult position. He's getting on top of this Nexus now potentially. Killing off the Templar anyway. A little bit surprised he didn't just go for the Nexus, honestly. I think that would have died really, really fast. But uh, he did kill all the cannons and now making a huge move here onto the plateau. Uh, taking over this area is so key. It's going to force uh, Rain to run through a bunch of lurkers here on the retreat. And look like he's not paying attention to this. He's just going to let his units get completely pulled apart. Jainong beautifully done here. Exactly what I was talking about. Putting some pressure down here onto this base. He did it a bit later than I thought he would. But he took advantage of it just like I imagined. Bringing up a lurker group and laying it down right here in between these two bases. It just makes it so much harder for the Protoss player to respond correctly. They end up running through uh, lurker spines with uh, no detection. Um, or they, you know, they just leave this base open. And they, you know, defend over here. And then you can just bring some more Defilers and Lings down here and force them to run through uh, this Lurker field again. Very, very well done here by Jadong. But you can see he was not relying on that play that he just did whatsoever. He was keeping his money low, keeping his supply very, very high, and getting this fresh base online. So going into the stupid late parts of ZVP... Having the Nidus Canal here over in the top left-hand corner. Just in case he had to fight Rain on five or six bases. He was going to be prepared with all the upgrades coming. I am super impressed by this game number one from Jainong. Let's see what Rain can do. If he can do a little bit better going into game number two. Okay, game number two. Looks like we have reversed spawns on the exact same map as before. Apocalypse really really impressed by Jadong's last performance nothing crazy nothing out of the ordinary for either player but Jadong just handling everything that Rain was doing perfectly he maneuvered himself into the exact position he wanted to be in and he utilized his defilers his quite early defilers I might add with his four base economy to great effect that's exactly what you want to do with uh, the defiler play of course you want to get plagues we didn't actually see uh, any plagues that game 
but you want to move into a position where you can set up Dark Swarm and force the Protoss to move through that. And that's exactly what he did over here uh, at that 6 o'clock base. Moved into position, dropped the Dark Swarm with Lurker underneath, forced Rain to push through it in order to save his base. And then, I mean, turned around set up more lurkers on high ground and forced rain to push through it again to get back to save his third base so he just didn't give him any good options he cut down the number of options that rain could really do and rain kind of crumbled under the pressure and here we're gonna have a 12 11 hatch 12 hatch 11 hatch i think it was here from jadong So Jadon going to take a little bit of a risk, but he could end up getting punished. Zealot is on the way. Jadon going to take potentially that base down here again. Is that, am I looking at that right? No, it looks like since he spotted that there was nothing up. I don't know, did he come, did he come all the way up there with the overlord? Maybe he did. Sees that there's... At least he checked the natural. So he knows that Rain is in top... Or in center right here. So he wants to take this base rather than this base down uh, at bottom center. That would be a little bit too close for these zealots. They're going to be able to come in, deal some extra damage, but... This is a bit of a scary moment. We've got... One Zealot in the Mineral line. Lings do finally pop out. We'll be chasing this around the back. But a good position now for Rain. Ooh, good micro there on the side of Jagadong. Even pulls out the one injured Zergling. So, great, great micro there. Preserving as many units as physically possible while building the bare minimum number of defenses. You have to get these extra lings because there could be, you know, these other two, three zealots uh, could have come out and hidden themselves around, just trying to run in at random points. So really important that he does uh, build just these this bare minimum, but rain behind this is going to go directly into a wall and get that cannon the nexus is almost complete so rain not in a bad position by any means he lost the first zealot he forced some lings it's just it's a little bit rough that jadong hasn't taken any damage aside from pulling the the drones off the mineral line for a second okay this is a big move here nice job killing off that probe at the last moment Four Zealots making their way over toward the third base. No drones have been transferred over there just yet. And the Ling number is pretty good. Bumping out a few more here. Going to take the engage at the last moment. Will Rain be able to get behind the mineral patches when this comes in? Okay, going to just take a trade uh, at this position. He wanted to get three Zealots to fight there, but he wasn't able to do it. Now getting behind the mineral patches here. This hasn't gone that good for rain honestly but maybe the trade will turn around as he tries to break back oh wow this is going really well for rain now dude so many lings just went down there and still three zealots uh, remain alive this is scary looks like he could get this one zealot here wow that's still alive how much health on that i didn't get to see it what must not have been very much but the zealots are finally going to come out and, oh, he almost gets a drone there. Crazy. Is he going to get one? Oh, it was so close. Rain, six kill zealot will finally go down behind this mineral patch. A good amount of harassment, but honestly, incredibly uh, strong hold from Jadong. And he's going to catch these extra zealots coming across. This was a little bit too much of a commitment here from Rain. You don't want to be losing those two zealots so easily. And now he has to bring probes to try and hold this position. 
No additional gateways here. So there is so much time now for Jadong to just drone to his heart's content. He's killed a ton of zealots. Was it six, six zealot kills this early on in the game? There's almost nothing that uh, Rain can do to put on pressure aside from utilize this one Corsair. He's built five mutas, but it's it's almost not even necessary, honestly. There's going to be cannons in the main, cannons in the natural. Probably won't be able to do too much damage with these five mutas. I, I almost feel like pumping two Scourge or two pairs of Scourge and then just everything else into drones might have been better because you just... You can't do anything here as Rain. All he's going to be doing is, is poking you with Corsair right now. The two Zealots can't move out. There's too many Lings out already. And if this just gets pushed back, why don't you have all of these as drones? I'm not sure. Let's see what kind of damage you can do here. One kill. Two kills. Does get one Corsair kill as well. Gonna maybe dive on top of the uh, Corsairs here, but with only four mutas remaining, now he can't deal damage to the can't deal damage to the Corsairs here. He can't pick off um, probes in one shot. Now he's gonna come back in, pick off another probe here and there. This is a lot of micro and intense control going on right when you're trying to drone up. So. One Corsair going to get sent across the map here. This is interesting. Sending in just one Corsair. If if your opponent is going for a big old Hydra or big old Mutalis play into the main base, losing one Corsair could be the difference between life and death. You might not, like if you don't have this, you could just lose. However, uh, if they're going for a giant Hydralis push behind this, you could also die here at the front if you don't have enough cannons. So I, I actually like just sending one Corsair just to check and see what's going on uh, for Jadong. A lot of Scourge out. These Corsairs, I don't think this is a good idea. Sending them in like this. They're definitely going to get wiped out. He saw the Mutas on the other side of the map. But the Mutas aren't really the problem. These Corsairs actually managed to kill one, all, all the Scourge. Only one Corsair went down there. We just chasing. Another Corsair gonna pop out right now. And the Scourge doesn't manage to connect. So that's rough. Definitely a bit of a struggle here right now for Jadong, who's supply blocked. Can't actually build Hydras for the moment. More gateways coming down now. This is remarkably similar, though, game state to uh, the previous, as the small contingent of zealots just gets cleaned up easily here over in the middle of the map. Looks like the mutas will be pushed away from the zealots now. Hydras are not in the greatest position. You want them behind this uh, building wall. Maybe even pull the drones to help out. The overlords are the real prize right now. If you can kill a bunch of overlords right over in the natural while this distraction is happening, then we'll call this a win for rain. He's coming in, getting some damage on this, but the uh, Hydra's being brought back just in the nick of time. Keep the majority of the overlords alive here. And once again, rain not really able to deal the damage he was looking for while losing a lot of his zealots and giving a ton of time here for... Jadong to drone up once again. He's at 40. We should see a fourth base coming down here pretty soon. But all I see is Hydras in production right now from Jadong. So maybe he wants to come across the map, try to deny a, a third base coming from Rain. Rain going to look into the natural, maybe try to find a few overlords while this attack is coming through I'm not sure how much it's gonna get because this is scary that's so many hydras pushing in psionic storm is just seconds away from completion will he get it in time to save his cannons there's the first storm second storm comes down here 
Whew. That was close. Third storm. Pushes everything back once again. But now there's enough zealots to hold this off. Well, that was close. Pretty scary moment for Rain. Barely able to hang on. The Zealots going to be pushed back home once again. Is it time to drone? Is it time for a fourth base? Jadong doesn't think so. Instead, he's going to shove forward. Try to pick off the Archon with seven kills. I would say that's a great target right now. Standing on this high ground. Forcing the Zealots into a very small clump. He manages to take a pretty decent trade. Which could lead to a containment over on Protoss Plateau side of the map. Let's see if that's Jadong's plan in this game. It can be a really, really strong play. If you could just stand on top of this ramp. It's quite a lot of space to cover, but the Protoss is going to have a very hard time pushing up that ramp against you. And also taking the third base will be a huge struggle. About two, three groups of Hydras making their way over towards this base. Looks like two groups. Oh, maybe a little bit more than two groups. Maybe two and a half. Oh, Hydras looking for a kill. He gets one Templar for just one Hydra. Okay, two Hydras going down. This is Templarless group of Protoss units that are coming up towards the high ground. If he takes a fight with this against pure Hydra, you can't imagine it's going to go well for him. The Observer gets picked immediately. Five Lurkers are on the way. Templar are coming up from the natural. I just getting stuck on top of each other. Very annoying stuff for Jadong to deal with right now. These Hydras getting stuck again. Super annoying. If one of those Hydras getting stuck causes you to lose, you know, eight Hydras on the retreat because Storm lands on top of them, it can be a major pain in the butt. Here comes some Lurkers from the south side. Hydras hitting from the left as well. Ooh. Great storm there. Lurker's pushing forward though. Getting on top of this. There's not enough storm anymore. And when the retreat fully happens is when a lot of the units tend to die. In full retreat there was Rain. But making a turn around now. Going to try and dive on top of this. With the Zealots he can push back the Hydras. But the Lurkers are going to start to really uh, splash down these Zealots very quickly. He's going to lose this base. Yeah, I cannot hold on to this position. Burrow on the way here for Jadong. A few more overlords as well. Plus two is about to finish. Plus one, plus one here for Rain, but he is getting shoved back so strongly. Oh my goodness. Right up into the natural. And Jadong has his pick of the litter for plays at this point. He can do basically whatever he wants. Some overlords, I guess, went down to these Corsairs while all of that chaos was going on. Fourth base. Just a twinkle in the eye of Jadong right now, of that drone in the top left. There it is. Coming in for some more Templar snipes. Another great snipe there. Two Hydras lost for a Templar. That is an amazing trade for Jadong. Lurkers on high ground once again. They are a little stacked this time. A great storm on top of all the Lurkers. And a few Hydras as well. Lurkers going to come forward once again. More Hydras. Ooh, he just killed his own Observer there by accident. One Lurker mixed into this fight. But that's so many Hydras to fight. Uh, back. Just pure uh, Dragoon. Not going to be able to make it happen. Two Lurkers make their way over here. Try to snipe some probes in the top right hand corner but not quite able to get those kills and a little bit sacrificial it seems so it's coming up once again a lurker in position to try and uh, clear those zealots as fast as possible 
But it seems like Jadong is not going to be able to hold this high ground. With a few more rounds of units, Rain is going to push everything back, and he has his third base online operational. These Corsairs with a lot of kills, still moving around the map looking for more overlords. Good control by Rain, keeping those alive this long. Not very easy to do when so much is going on. This has been. A very difficult game for Rain thus far, but if he picks off this hatchery, it'll make his life so much easier. Great drone control, bugging out these zealots a little bit, and I think he'll just barely save. A lot of these uh, zealots are actually quite low from earlier, and he does get it. 137 health left on that. If that fourth base went down, I would put Rain in a, a full-on winning position. As it stands, he's still in a good spot. Uh, even able to come up onto that high ground, but... The fourth base... Oh god, a DT! There's nothing over here! Oh man. If he just goes after the Hatcher, I think that would be the best call. He's just gonna get it. Oh, this is huge! That DT making a massive difference in this game. Just by sniping that one single building, he has put his commander into such a good position here. Rain, gonna give this guy a medal when he gets back home. Okay, he doesn't make it back home. Posthum post posthumously, posthumous medal here for that DT. Posthumous, is that what you call it? Might have said that wrong. Drones on a long transfer back here. Whoa, they're all going to sit on this extractor. He will begin that fourth base once again, but sitting here on three base versus three base with no hive. Not a good look for Jadong. He is going to make a huge move, though, across the map and try to take the, uh, the fight right now. Here we go, a lot of lurkers burrowing down, a lot of great storms though, hitting all of these hydras. Oh my goodness. This is some phenomenal trading for the Protoss army. That was, oh, that looked like one of my games, guys, honestly. Like, oh yeah, I got a great arc here. This is gonna be fantastic. Jadong taps out. Let's, let's take a look at that last engagement one more time. I think Jadong just a bit too frustrated maybe with this base going down. He thought I need to do something right here, right now, but you really do have to take these fights a lot slower if you want to make your army uh, at all cost efficient. Because look at this, just watch, let, let's just watch this one more time because this is kind of insane. How many Templar in this fight? Seven Templar, oof. My goodness, seven Templar with a lot of storms. Probably at least nine storms, I would say. Yeah, pretty close. Pretty close to nine storms here. Big group of lurkers coming up. That's so many lurkers. It's 11 lurkers, guys. More Hydras on the way. They're all going to be rallied forward to try and take advantage of a one fight here. But this just does not go the way that Jadong intended. The long line of Lurkers making its way into the back line. Storms on them. Great storm right there as well. But it's really the storms on this left-hand side that do the, the big damage. And Hydras are very well spread right now. If this army fights this army and there's no very strong storms dealing damage to the Hydras on the left hand side, this should be a one fight for Zerg, but just watch the storms on this left hand side and how Jadong not able to control. He is burrowing lurkers right now. He's not able to look at both sides of the fight at the same time. So these Hydras get massacred look at how many hydras go down to just the four storms 
up here in the top left. That was like 24 Hydras with three storms just got killed. And the Lurkers, of course, get melted. Not being a very uh, good consummate attacking unit. And what's left here for Rain? About the same size of army as what he had before. Less, uh, minus a few storms because he made a bunch of Archons. <laughs> this is still such a big army. It's so scary. And the supply drop from Jadong in that fight. Kind of crazy to watch. This is, yeah, not the type of fight that you want to... Um, that you want to go for as a Zerg player. Really. This is uh, the opposite of what we saw in last game where he set up Lurkers and forced the Protoss to run through it. This is the opposite of that. That's This is running up on the Protoss army and trying to burrow and, and fight uh, amidst the storms. And it's just not going to work out for Jadong. I thought he was doing really, really well until that base in the top, uh, center left went down. And really, that's all it takes. Just a small Zealot counterattack and a DT follow-up uh, to take out a Zerg player, even though they're playing at such a high level. Um, I want to see Jadon go back to his old strategy of just getting into Hive as quickly as possible. Let's see if he tries that again or if he's going to switch it up completely. Jump into game number three. Wow, it's kind of wild we're going back to back to back on Apocalypse. We've reversed the spawns once again. Now down here in the bottom right hand corner, Jadong. Bottom left, Rain. So once again, it's available here to Jadong to take 12. You can take this base up here in the top center and easily grab the fourth behind. Are we going to see the exact same strategy as game number one? Or will he try to play another? layer style sticking on that layer you know going into mutas and lur uh, lurkers try to play it out that way this time i'm curious once again scout is going to come in the right direction the gateway this time i'm here for rain and he's going to be able to put on some Basic pressure, but not a whole lot. Not like last game where he was able to get into the main with the Zealot. This time, we've got an overpool coming. So enough Lings should be out to deal with that early pressure. That first Zealot, as it comes across the map, is going to be met with probably four, maybe six Lings. I'm just waiting for everything to finish up. Right as he sees the gateway, he's able to make the decision about how many links to make, and he goes immediately into six links. That drone. Little ring around the rosy there. I'm not sure what that's all about. Maybe pathing. Maybe he made a couple of different. I put up, put, you know, made the drone move that direction. I didn't really. I don't really understand why he would go around the ring around the rosy there, but there it is. Zealots out on the map. Six lings pushing forward right away. The probe's not in position to spot that, so this is a bit of a problem right now for Rain. Did the probe actually not see the, the Zerg? I thought he definitely got in there to see it. And he would have known based on the trajectory of the Overlord. But he sent the probe way over to the top uh, center. That other main base. A bit confusing why he would want to do that. And Nexus will start. More Lings are at the front. Going into the main now. He gets one probe kill. Can he get any more? Two. Get these lings. Okay, almost gets all of them. So two probe kills for the majority of the lings. A reasonable trade. But these lings should be able to slip in. And that'll be three lings in the main once again. Oh, gets another probe. Good stuff for Jadong. Gonna start to harass in the main and building lings back at home. So three sets of lings start. 
those zealots that are going across the map i don't think they'll get any damage done so they turn around and head back home three jadong lings in the main base is scary more links popping out of course and we're going to continue this pressure i don't see a probe in the natural to start the uh forge he actually gets the cybernetic core before the forge oh this is getting kind of scary here with that many lings out and no forge we're gonna have to rely completely on a zealot based defense for quite some time got two zealots there has the full wall doesn't have the cannon on the way though and the lings are gonna start to hit that gateway pretty darn soon trying to shove everything back there's the target of the gateway another zealot does pop out looks like rain is going to hold not able to get any more damage in this space oh oh can he actually run by no not gonna be able to get in there we don't have a layer he's pulled off of gas we may have to go for a hydralis based defense of the skies here stargate on the way one ling in the main just trying to get that damage staying alive for now We'll only take one more hit. Speed is done. So technically it should live for a very long time, but maybe Jadong will mess up with that and end up losing that final Ling. Really close to losing it there, but he's doing a good job of microing that, of just at least keeping vision in the main base so he knows what could be coming. We have Hydralis Den on the way extra hatches as well probe number is skyrocketing but the drones are keeping up you can see 26 to 28 very strong drone count at the moment for jadong and this corsair is going to come across the map looks like we might even start a third cannon here just to have a bit of safety he hasn't had much information on the map at all so far but he sends in the corsair now and he sees what's coming the lair is just now on the way and hydras are out although not in high numbers we've only got five hatches here so far the zealots are going to start that push plus one not done yet so links are going to be very helpful in this circumstance now the zealots are going to push forward so that the hydras can't defend these overlords in the front how many overlords can he kill he'll get i think at least two jadong supply blocked with only three hydras on the way doesn't have speed on his hydras actually needs to stay behind the walls here he could end up just getting poked out zealots making their way back home plus one's not done neither is speed doesn't want to fight until he has those upgrades ready but honestly this is a good pressure play for rain rain did kill a few overlords and he forced a lot of hydras out of jadong who's not on the greatest overall drone saturation just yet he really wants to pull pu pu to pop out some more drones right now has a few more in production you can see he's getting back into it but he doesn't have six hatches just yet the early ling count that he built into slowing everything down just slightly right now for jadon and rain is honestly looking very good two more cannons on the way he's afraid of a counter attack of just pure hydra five hatch hydra you can make a lot of hydralis on a small amount of drones but he will continue to drone up here 
and begin to take trades with these zealots. They've got the plus one. They've got the speed. This is the timing now. They will get pushed back. Quite a good amount of hydras here ready to fight. Z are Ling's trying to look for an opportunity to maybe cut off the zealots, but the zealots are going to turn and completely surround these hydras. This could be a great trade for rain. The Lings are helping out a lot, though. Getting some of that extra DPS and reinforcements will arrive. Forcing back rain once again. He's going to come in, maybe get a kill on this overlord here. But overlord speed is done as is hydralis speed. So it's going to be harder than ever to get those kills. Zelda's so pushed back once again. So this game, Jadong. Playing more of a layer style without taking the base over at the 12 o'clock. Taking the norm more normal third base here. And finally getting into his sixth hatch. It looks scary. Poised at the front of this base. But I assure you, you cannot get through there. That is too many storms. Too many cannons. So Jadong will just be relegated to chasing away zealots right now. Not much more that uh, that he can do at the at this point than that. Just run around and chase these zealots. Try to capture them here in the top center. At the same time, more zealots going to come out here to the front. Another round of drones makes its way over here to the third base. 43 total drones. Finally, the third gas is going to come online as Lurker upgrade starts. It's a good timing. Out of Jadong. Nothing in the main base to defend. If there was a drop coming in with some DTs. We could see a lot of economic damage. Go down. Onto Jadong. He still doesn't have a Spire. Which is a huge red flag as a Zerg player. If you don't have a Spire at this point in the game. You can get punished so hard. By those uh, shuttles. Shuttles are going to come in and drop whatever they want. Zealots, Templar, Dark Templar. And they'll end up getting a huge amount of damage. So really shocking that we don't have the Spire just yet. The Spire, absolutely crucial. Unless the Protoss player just doesn't do anything with the shuttle. So <laughs> I don't think Rain's going to do anything here. Maybe Jadong will get away with it. But there's always, of course, the option of actually switching into full-on Mutalist play as well. Could be a really strong move, considering how few Corsairs we have left at this point. There we go. Corsair goes down. As you can see, almost none left. Lurker's on high ground. I think... Rain will have to fall back from this position. It's a little bit too strong. Maybe trying to push up here, though. The Zealots are going to get minced very, very quickly. Everything getting shoved back right now. Yeah, not able to make any progress over here. And the Zealots got shut down at the top center. Good trading out of Jadong. More Lurkers on the way here. Fourth base coming down. Third has not been started here for rain just yet. There it is. 50 drones. Two drone advantage right now for Jadong as he pushes through the middle of the map. Is he actually going to try and run up this ramp? This could be a really hard engage for Jadong. Coming up with these lurkers. He's got to dodge the storms really, really well here. And the storms land on the majority of the lurkers. He does manage to snipe the observer. And there's no more storms left in this army. I think maybe one there. But pure Hydra actually sniping down a lot of these Dragoons. It's a reasonable fight for Jadong at this point. If he can chase down and kill a couple more Templar, he's going to be feeling very good about this exchange. And he does manage to overwhelm. We're coming forward with just a mass group of Hydras pushing everything back. Rain is going to lose his fourth. Or his third, excuse me. He has to cancel. Really nice smooth play here out of Jadong. Utilizing those first few early lurkers to great effect, although they didn't deal a huge amount of damage. They helped him to push through and establish this position now. Where he's already denied the third base one time. 
Oh, it's a little bit rough running back into that storm, but every single Templar that gets picked off right here is massive. Lurkers out in the front, they definitely need to split up. And the containment is beginning now. That containment looking very powerful. Super hard to break out of here as the Protoss player. You might even want to kill your own buildings at this point. This Jadong is just going to contain you completely. One Zealot making its way up to the top center, but this is the only thing that Rain has out on the map. Kind of a shame that he didn't go for a shuttle like I talked about earlier. Shuttle would allow him to harass the, this completely undefended main. Potentially go around and do storm drops or just zealot drops would be really annoying to deal with while you're trying to keep the contain active getting zealot drop is going to be incredibly painful lurker number has been thinned out here at the front but more are being sent forward we have no hint at a hive here just yet from jadong but as everything starts to push out here you're going to jump on top of the observers once again and as those two observers go down the lurker contain buys that much more time lurkers are now in range of the wall more are coming here forward rain needs to push out really really soon or he is just going to bleed out he's running out of minerals at both of these two bases 156 340 we're just minutes away from Rain being out of this game. He needs to break this contain right now. He doesn't get the storm with the first Templar. Second storm looking a little bit weak here. Lurker's coming forward. He's trying to keep that probe or that uh, observer alive the best that he possibly can, but he's being forced all the way back here on top of the cannons. The cannons are starting to go down as well, and Lurkers are pushing forward even more strongly with the Hydras busting down this natural, and GG is called Jadong. Takes a sick little win here by bashing down the front door of the Protoss. You don't expect to see Rain get taken out quite like that. The last game he did a fine job of skirmishing and fighting with the layer based army of Jadong, but Jadong showing that he's absolutely capable of taking fights and of winning fights making up for it. Making up for that last performance uh, with some great fights this game. It always feels like you're not going to be able to do it. It always feels like running up with lurkers and just trying to burrow around the Protoss army is not a great move, but Jadong makes it look pretty decent there. Takes out that army and pushes in for the win. Let's jump into game number four. Okay, we're finally going to get a different map here. Got Jadong in the top right-hand corner, Rain in the bottom right, and hasn't been working out too well for Rain. just foregoing any sort of harassment via shuttle especially when your opponent is trying to contain you is when those type of plays those type of harassment plays can pay off so well we'll see if rain wants to diverge from what he's been going for for so far pure macro plays with no real tricks, just uh, scattered engagements. That seems to favor Jadong a little bit. The only time that J or that Rain was able to take a win in this series was when he got you know, some harassment damage done, a run by that was successful into the fourth base. But I digress. We've got another gateway expansion here for rain he's gonna try and put on early pressure but third base looks like just barely gonna get set down here can he actually get it in in time it's so close the probe will not block so a good win here for jadon we'll start his spawning pool in a moment there's an opportunity though where rain can get in for a little bit of damage here. First Zealot is about to pop out. And when that comes across the map, we won't have the spawning pool quite done just yet. There will be an opportunity, like I said, for some damage. 
sending down the drone now he's gonna see the gateway before spawning pool is done so let's see how much larva he saves sees the zealot spawning pool not quite finished just yet I expect six lings, but we may end up going with more. I expect it just bare minimum though, honestly. Jadong feeling himself when it comes to these uh, pressure plays, or when, he com when it comes to these uh, macro plays, excuse me. Second drone making its way over to the third base. This has been delayed pretty hev heavily, pretty significantly thus far. Second zealot is out here. Looks like rain not going to send the zealots into the main. Instead. Just going to opt for a retreat here. Going to set up a wall for himself. Second pylon in the natural forge not yet started. So there is some potential damage that can be done by Jadon. If he starts to pick away at this gateway we don't have another zealot on the way so just pure just three zealot defense if the gateway starts to take damage and the zealots come out to fight a run by is potentially likely it's possible this probe still running around the outside of the map that ling is bugged he's not going to move until you hit stop command No reason, no, uh, just, just part of the, part of the game. More links being produced. Speed is about to finish. Is he going to try and do some sort of, uh, a, an attack here? It doesn't seem like that's going to work. He really wants to make a bunch more links. Try to bust this natural. I think it's going to go pretty poorly for Jadon. Maybe if the Zealots come out. If the Zealots start to leave the natural. This uh, group of speedlings. Could end up dealing a lot of damage. Are we actually going to move out here with four Zealots? This is big. Jadon. Brings everything together. It's just going to be a counter attack I believe. No he's going for the Zealots. Okay he will just crush the Zealot force. I thought it was likely a counterattack, but yeah, just swallowing this up is, is pretty reasonable as well. Make full drones behind this because you're not going to be under any, any pressure at all for a good amount of time. Trying to get some information here with the early zealots, but going to get shut down before getting across that map and it is in fact a hydralis play four hydras on the way could be looking to bust from this position first corsair is about to pop out as the hydras hit the field still can't go out and get any information on the map those speedlings kind of throwing off rain right now he starts two more cannons. I think he'll let this one finish, and he's waiting for information with the second cannon. Very good, prudent maneuver here by Rain. The moment that he sees these hy hydras, he's going to know that the hydra bus is incoming, and he already has a third cannon nearly complete. So this is this is great play from Rain. Very good decision making, adding on that cannon and readying it for cancel. Now I don't think that the plus one can be denied. I think this plus one goes is going to finish. Pretty much no matter uh, how hard Jadong tries to attack this. There's too many cannons up already. We're going to have five cannons in just a moment. And Hydras are defending the overlords. There's not quite enough of them though. There, there's a few more Hydras popping out. Overlords will be defended near this natural I just I think there's too many cannons rain has done this a little bit too nicely four drones on the way two more hatches coming up Jadong is not going to take this uh, or commit to this excuse me instead transitioning with only able with only being able to kill the gateway this is not a great spot from oh, wait did he cancel 
Well, I am shocked that he canceled this. I guess he is going to end up getting it in the end. Double forge in the main. I guess he just canceled it and um, started the forge at the same time. Assuming that that was going to go down. I thought that this pile or this cannon was far enough forward that it could deny those hydras from attacking. But I guess three hydras is going to be enough as long as you've got three attacking there. Uh, eventually that that the forge will go down and with that upgrades have been denied plus zero here we're gonna have plus one for the hydralis about the same time as one one finishes for the protoss so honestly this looking pretty good for jadon 42 workers on three bases six hatches finishing up there's the spire this is something that he was missing from that one game he, he ended up losing. Or no, wait. That was just last game. Last game he didn't build the Spire. Still ended up taking that one, but I'm glad that he's adding on this tech. Having the Spire is incredibly important. You need that for the denial of shuttles. Also, with just two Corsairs... You can easily switch into mutas. Although there is a dark archon on the way. Look at that. Realizing that there's a possibility of, of mutalist transition. Mutalist switch this time. Gonna get a dark archon here. That is big. Because I think that this will probably be a mutalist switch. We haven't seen lurker upgrade start. So I'm expecting like nine mutas to pop out in just a moment here there it is nine mutas no five mutas plus lurker upgrade starts so he's gonna make a decent number of mutas to shut down whatever zealot charge comes out and then switch directly into lurker afterwards with a third evolution chamber starting or is this a second one okay just second one probably for a melee upgrade or will he get armor? These two Corsairs on a collision course here with the Scourge. Almost getting them both there. He gets one. Only one will make it home. Maelstrom on the way. Scourge gets pulled back. Mutas coming in. We do not have Maelstrom. And we have the energy, but we just don't have the upgrade yet, just yet. Oh, the storm whiffing. He sees the Dark Archon. And he gets a Templar kill. Everything going really well with this dive from Jadon. He knows now not to commit to more Mutalis. Because the Maelstrom is going to be deadly. The five get their job done. And Jadon takes that information home. He starts a bunch of Lurkers. Getting set up for this fourth base. It just needs to contain this area and this area over here. Of course, this could be a potential problem, this avenue of attack. As Rain moves forward, though, can he force out the Maelstrom on these damaged mutas? He's just going to dive onto the Templar and force it out. Okay. Looks like he will lose all of the mutas. He doesn't get a... Templar to cast the storm, but he does bait out that one important spell. That's so many lurkers and hydras, dude. He's got such a supply right now. 20, 125 to 135. Can Rain actually push anywhere? Just one zealot roaming the map, but there's adequate defenses over here at this base. Lurkers being made. Zealot might be able to sneak in here, maybe get a little damage done. Now it was um, on a right click, I guess, around the map. Let's see. Are going to spot this? Okay, he does see it. I'm going to get rid of that Zealot, no problem. Rain thinking about pushing through here, but the Lurker number is a bit too strong. Maybe rotating over to the top left now. Having to defend in two different places. 
It's a little bit tough for Jadong at the moment. He doesn't have Nidus just yet. A lot more lurkers are being made. He's going to try and take a push over this ramp. Army already be being brought here to the south side. Jadong ready to engulf this army if it indeed uh, went for a full engagement. Instead, just going to bring everything together here as Rain pulls back. He's ready to surround this army from either side. Rain, no really good option for pushing right now. Instead, going to go ahead and take a third base. Probes will be transferred. So he is still growing. But I'm afraid for Rain here. Rain is going to have a hard time pushing through any of these locations. And again, Jadon getting ready for the huge surround. Look at all the purple army going across the map. He's bringing it around behind this, but Rain once again pulls back before getting completely surrounded. He's going to set up a wall here. If everything comes from these two angles, easy storms throughout this area to just kill off all the lings and hydras that are running forward. So Rain going to hold on. Is he going to go for a fourth base here? The mineral only. Likely to be taken next. Top left hand corner. Going to get snatched up by Jadong in just a moment. Hive is now done. We're just about 14 minutes in this game. And Defiler Mound will start in just a moment, I believe. Crackling on the way. Upgrades looking good. No melee attack upgrades just yet, but... Only one attack for the Protoss Force. Plus two plus, plus two plus two is about to finish. So that'll be a good timing for Rain to try and push into one of these locations. But supply is looking huge. Okay, good dodge there with the Lings. Just pulling them out. I don't see much movement from Jadong. I thought he would be sending everything out to go and surround this. But... He's waited until all the lurkers are dead, and there's really not much over here. The Nidus didn't start. We're missing a Nidus coming in from behind. A lot of lings making their way forward here. Crackling is not done, and that 2-2 is kicking in very heavily. Wow, lurkers running right up on top of this army. Gonna start to get a lot of damage on these dragoons. Dragoons not pulling back uh, as quickly, maybe, as they should. Storms on the retreat aren't going to happen, and Jadong is going to clear up a bunch of these Templar and Archons as they're trying to retreat. Some Zealots here on this side, but coming in from a wide angle, Jadong going to cut off any retreat from Rain. Rain's still fighting right now with a fair number of Zealots and Dragoons, but the majority of his force will be lost. Only three Dragoons may be going to be able to get out of this position. Another base coming at six o'clock, but what are the sh chances that Rain can hold on to that spot? Jadong is flowing from every single angle at this point. So many lurkers and hydras coming from each rally point. As more bases are established, Jadong is pushing forward. Crackling is done. We've almost got the filer upgrades. As the consume is about to finish. Nice snipes here on the backside with a few of these hydras. Lurkers are going to retreat as they get overwhelmed, but I mean, to this base, no, not going to be able to do it with the Templar sitting right there. He's got two storms as well. So backing away smartly here. Jadon waiting for that Defiler tech. It's a little scary that Rain has four bases already. Four base Protoss can fight for an insane amount of time. And there's, of course, this base here, which will be tempting for Rain to take next. It's going to be coming pretty soon, I imagine. And Jadong has the entire top left. Now he got the Nidus finally. Okay, that's what I was scared about is when Protoss starts to break through this way and the army is not already here flanking it and there's no Nidus, you could end up losing that base. Rain could have pushed right up into this natural and taken a big fight in this tightly uh, tight corridor. Maybe ran his army up into this main. It's very hard to take a fight from there, but Jadong managed to get in 
from behind quickly enough. Now he's making a push with the Defilers. Gonna shut down these cannons really quickly. This is exactly the type of play I was talking about before. What makes Zerg trade exceptionally well is when they force Protoss to break through Dark Swarm Lurkers, and he's doing it amazingly here. Forcing the dragons back. Oh, what? Rain taps out already. Jadon. Excellently timed Defiler play here. Making it look easy the way that he sets this up. Rain was bouncing between these two bases. He knows that there's going to be attack coming at one of these two locations, but it, Jadon sees a moment of weakness, files forward, brings forward the lurkers, the lings, and the defilers, breaks this base in the center right, and there's nothing that Rain can do about that. Really wasn't able to form any sort of counterattack. And running through this defiler position, this Dark Swarm position, it just wasn't going to happen with so many Dragoons in the army. Rain is forced to tap out. In incredibly impressive Jadong's performance in this series, especially with the Defiler play. It seems every time he got Defilers in this series, Rain really wasn't able to keep up. Great, great job by Jadong. Really enjoyed this series, guys. If you like this, make sure to hit the like button. We're going to be back tomorrow with another Daily Dose episode. I know some of you guys are starting to burn out on the Flash games, so we're going to start mixing in more uh, Zerg games as well. Anything that anything good that comes up on the ladder we'll be covering, so make sure to hit the subscribe, follow along for more updates. Guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.